Welcome to TPM Vids Part B, where we talk all about amusement and theme parks. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. Amusement parks have been a form of entertainment since the late 1800s. Thousands of people would flock to these parks so they could experience the thrill of a wooden roller coaster or a leisure ride on the antique carousel. Later in the mid 1900s, we saw the birth of the theme parks, where a unifying theme tied together the attractions, like what was seen at Knott's Berry Farm and Disneyland. Soon, people began wanting more than just amusement, they wanted an escape. Nowadays, you hear the term theme park used interchangeably, even if the park falls more under an amusement park. Either way, hundreds of these parks across North America have come and gone. These parks are fascinating, whether they're closed for good and completely abandoned, or just closed for the season. It's a much different perspective on a park than what we're used to seeing while it's in operation. So let's explore this closed theme park. On the south end of downtown Toronto in Ontario, Canada, sits an island. Well, it's actually a series of small islands, totaling about 820 acres in size. The only way to access the area is by taking one of these ferries over from the city. On the largest island, Center Island, you'll find the 14-acre Centerville theme park. The park was built in 1967 by the Beasley family, and at the time, it was a great representation of the classic amusement park but it was also infused with thematic elements that would have classified it as a theme park. Built way before the days of Canada's Wonderland, Centerville filled the amusement park void in Toronto since the city lost Sunnyside Amusement Park at the end of the 1954 season. The carousel from Sunnyside Amusement Park in Toronto was actually purchased by Walt Disney. To this day, it's still used at Disneyland in California, where it's now known as King Arthur's Carousel. Well, when Centerville opened in 1967, it was an immediate hit with families all across Toronto. The park was modeled and themed after a turn-of-the-century town. There were various slow-moving tracked rides like the antique cars, a miniature train was added around the property, and the park had its very own antique carousel. Operating during summer months and on weekends in May and September, Centerville is a great little park for families and has retained a lot of its charm. Not much has changed since 1967, and it still resembles that simple classic amusement park. Well, that's until it closes for the season. It goes from being a park that's fully alive during the summer, to looking like it's shut down and abandoned once the beginning of October rolls around. This is a theme park site you normally don't get to see, since after a park closes for the season, the gates are usually shut and the park isn't accessible by the public. With Centerville, the park sits within the landscape of the island. Aside from this front entrance, there is no physical gate that separates the park from other areas on the island, so anyone can just walk around freely at any time of year. The park's rides operate on a ticket system, so there's never a front gate fee to enter. With a variety of different rides, it's interesting to see how each of them is shut down for the season, prepping the park for the snowy winter ahead. So let's take a look at the antique carousel. The carousel was built in 1908 and was purchased by the Beasley family in 1964 from Bushkill Park in Pennsylvania. It's actually only one of nine antique carousels still in operation in Canada. It's also one of 30 carousels that are still operating made by the Dentzel Carousel Company. King Arthur's Carousel at Disneyland is another Dentzel Carousel. Well, during the summer at Centerville, you're able to see right through this building while getting a glimpse at the 52 hand-carved animals under the roof. After the season ends and the park closes, the metal doors on the building are lowered to conceal this antique ride. And you'd never know that there's over 110 years of history sitting right in that building. Surrounding the carousel building, you'll find the games area, but there's no prizes to be won. 
These buildings also have their doors lowered, locked, and even the light bulbs on the tops of the buildings have been removed on one side. Just by looking at this image, it's kind of hard to imagine that this area is usually bustling with people during the warm summer months. It's a ghost town everywhere you turn, but there's something really peaceful about the area. The mature landscape really adds to the charm of this place, but while it's completely empty, you can see how easy it would be for Mother Nature to take this area over. It wouldn't take long for the trees, plants, and animals to reclaim the land. Centerville's home to many family-friendly rides, including a handful of simple spinning flat rides. It isn't long before these four giant bears are removed and it's just the frame that remains. I mean, with the wet leaves stuck to the asphalt, this footage would leave you to believe that it was just left here to rot. If it wasn't for the odd glimpse of people you see walking around the perimeter of the park, you could definitely convince someone that this park is abandoned. Since a lot of the trees are still green, the yellow and brown leaves on the ground give the impression that this area could have been deserted over multiple seasons. Even though at this point the park has only been closed for about two weeks, you can see how quickly cobwebs form when there's limited traffic and movement through an area full of dense nature. Obviously, this is all a much different vibe than a park that's fully operational. Some of the infrastructure really shows its age when the park is in this state, like what's usually the kiddie boat ride. It hasn't taken long for leaves, dirt, and sand to find a home at the bottom of the tank. A lot of the tracked rides, like the antique cars and fire engines, are stored indoors, and even though this tunnel has a sign marked Danger, Keep Out, if you peek inside, this is where the train hides during the winter to protect it from the elements. One ride that's always protected by the elements, since it's always indoors, is the Scrambler. And fun fact, if you've seen the 2011 rom-com Take This Waltz, this scene with Michelle Williams was filmed on the Scrambler at Centerville in Toronto. Pretty much every outdoor ride has pieces removed and stored away for the winter months. Take a look at the Ferris wheel. It has an interesting windmill theme that looks great during normal operation. Then it's stripped to its shell. Seeing the park this bare really shows how much work needs to be done in order to return the park back to operation for the next season. The mini mine coaster track twists and turns, but there's no train in sight. All the ride vehicles have been removed from every attraction, minus the twirling teacups and the rock and ferry rides. Due to the ride's designs, I'm guessing those vehicles can't be removed from their bases. But if you look at the teacups, the teapot has been removed, but the teacups are just sitting there, collecting leaves every single day. Later in the fall, they're both eventually covered up with tarps to protect them from the snow. One distinct image that would lead someone to believe that this park was in fact abandoned is the Saw Green Lumber Mill ride. Usually the water is flowing and people are screaming as they plunge down the drop of this log ride. Saw Green Lumber Mill opened for the 1972 season, and at the time, the owner described it as an improved version of the Shoot the Shoots ride. Water rides that are classified as Shoot the Shoots usually have larger boats and go straight up and come right back down. This water ride at Centerville, manufactured by Aerodynamics, is fully classified as a log flume, since it has a few more twists and turns than the average shoot the shoot, not to mention that the ride vehicles are actually logs. Well, right now, there's no one waiting to get in line for this ride. When the water's drained and it's closed up for the season, there's an eerie feeling looking at these empty waterways. 
I mean, you can tell that 40 years worth of people have floated through these paths just by looking at them. But it makes you think, what if this park was actually left forever? What would this ride look like in five years? What would the entire park look like if it was abandoned? Who knows? What I do know is that Centerville continues to operate every season. But I thought it was really interesting to share this sort of behind the scenes backstage look at how a theme park shuts down for the season and what it actually looks like. So if you were given the opportunity to walk through a theme park while it's closed, either after hours or while it was shut down for the season, which park would you choose? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel and check out some of these other videos which we're sure you'll like.